All right, someone asked a question uh, fairly recently about chopping, whether it was uh, the rules or what it is, how it works, the etiquette, something like that. I think the etiquette, I'll explain all of it first. I need to like the cigar. I have a sore throat, so why not have a cigar? Throat can't feel any worse right now. If you don't know what it is at all, no limit hold them. The player clockwise of the dealer button puts out the small blind. In the games I play, a dollar. The player clockwise of that player puts out what we call the big blind. In the games I play, the big blind, two dollars or three dollars. So, if everyone folds and it gets back to the small blind, in most rooms, not all of them, most rooms, the blinds are allowed to chop. Each player takes back the money that was out there, the dealer button moves, and we move on to the next hand. I don't do it, I used to, I don't. Um, a lot of people do, most people do. Whether you do or not, that's how it works. It folds to the blinds, each blind takes back the money that the person put out there, Dealer button moves, we move on to the next hand. So no hand really happened. There was a chance for a hand to happen. No one who was not the blind put any money in. And when it got down to the last two people, we just moved on to the next hand. Okay, that's what it is. The etiquette, the normal etiquette is you either chop every time you're in that situation or you never chop. So right now and since like 2019, I never chop. I don't pick and choose when I do it. I never do it. A lot of people do it under any circumstance. Okay, so that's the etiquette. I understand that's the accepted etiquette. Uh, some people will get really mad if you don't do that. A couple reasons why I don't care so much about this etiquette. Etiquette in general, yeah, like I'm an Emily Post fan, but in this instance, I don't really care that much. Here's the first reason why I don't care about the etiquette. For one, usually the person who wants to like look at his cards and decide whether or not he wants to play is very new to poker. I want that person to have a great experience. If that person enjoys looking at his cards and when they're bad, he wants to chop and take his $1 back in the small blind and when he has good cards, he wants to play, okay, I don't have a problem with that. I want new players to have a fun, great experience while they're playing and I want them to return and continue playing in the future. If that's like something that this player likes, okay. It's not like a huge thing. It's not like he's cursing people out. It's not like he's he's calling people names. It's not like he's using racial slurs. It's not like he's throwing his cards at the dealer. He wants to play sometimes, he doesn't want to play sometimes. Okay, so sometimes that happens, and I really don't like when other people like attack the guy and make him feel terrible and inexperienced and new and give him a, an awful experience. That has happened plenty of times. I don't like when that happens. If the guy wants to look at his cards, he's 7 4 and fold or, or chop and take his $1 back, but when he looks at his cards and he sees King Jack and he wants to play it, okay, I have no problem with that. Not just as a guy at the table. If I'm the big blind, I have no problem with that. Occasionally, he wants to chop. This is back when I did chop. If people like that wanted to chop after they looked at their cards, okay. If they wanted to play after they looked at their cards, okay. So that's one reason why I don't care about the etiquette of like really strictly enforcing um, someone to always do it or never do it. It's actually going to be more than two reasons now that I'm thinking about it in depth here. But second reason is if someone wants to look at his cards before he decides whether he wants to chop or not, you can eliminate a lot of the hands that he's not playing. There was a guy back in 2016 in Planet Hollywood. He was he was on my right. So when he was the small blind, I was the big blind. It was great because I was the only one at the table who was okay with this. And I was the only one who mattered because I was the big when it would fold to him in the small and he would decide whether he wanted to play or not. It didn't happen a ton because it was Planet Hollywood, amazing games. It wasn't folding to the small blind all that often. But when it did, he would look at his cards and then he would say... He wanted to chop if they were bad cards. He would say he wanted to play, and then he would throw money out if they were good cards. So when he wants to play, you could, I was eliminating so many hands. He's not playing the trash hands. So if there's a board that's like three, four, five, six, and he said, I don't want to chop after he looked at his cards, you know how unlikely it is that he has a two or a seven in his hand for a straight? Like, 
it's possible. He could have, you know, pocket twos, a pair of twos in his hand. He could have a pair of sevens. He could have probably ace two or ace seven. But, like, he's pretty much playing, like, uh, the paint cards, the kings, the queens, the jacks, the aces, of course. Like, it's pretty unlikely. So that information could help you. You know, if you if I had, like, three, four on three, four, five, six against a lot of people, if the pot gets big, I'm behind. They have better two pair. Sometimes they have three of a kind. Sometimes they have a straight almost all the time. This guy, he's probably not playing the 7-3 for the better two pair. He's probably not playing, you know, the jack-7 offsuit to give him a 7 for the straight. Like, I could eliminate so many hands by the fact that he would look at his cards and say, yeah, I want to play this one. It meant he had good cards, probably high cards. So I loved it. Third reason is that it's kind of like the first reason, um, newer players, like, not feeling out of place. No one in home games chops. Chopping is only a thing as far as I know it in, uh, casinos. Some like private games. All the people out there who have only played, like, in their kitchens or living rooms or basements with, uh, like, plastic chips or, like, pennies they're pretending are chips, chopping isn't a thing in those games. Like, no teenagers are playing cards and chopping when it gets to the blinds. So when those people come to the casino, I want them to have a great experience and continue playing and have fun, and I want them to stay in the player pool. They don't know what it is. Just explaining it to them makes them feel so out of place. It also doesn't really work. When you try to explain chopping to someone who's never heard of it before, and you try to do it while a hand is going on in like five seconds, they don't get it. Usually they just feel pressure to to do it. They don't quite understand it. They do it. They don't know what it is because in their home games, like in their kitchens, it's not a thing. They want to play. They don't care if there's five people in the hand or four or three or only two. They drove to the casino because they want to play poker. And like now somehow like a lot of people are kind of like bullying them on purpose or bullying them without trying into just like not playing. And it's like, they're thinking like, I, I don't understand this. I'm like in the poker room, I'm like trying to play hands and people are telling me, no, take your money back. Like we're not playing this hand and they don't get it. And my fourth and final reason, hold on a second. Is that the reasoning never makes sense. If people had good reasons for doing it and sometimes they do, okay, I don't agree. I don't chop. If you do, it doesn't mean I hate you. That's fine. I'm allowed to do it one way. You're allowed to do it another way. It's just that the reasoning is often a reason that makes absolutely no sense. The reason is usually that, like, there's no point to play this hand. There's nothing in there. What are we playing for? That is every single hand that ever happens before someone bets. You deal out cards to eight people to nine people back in the day before corona when we had ten-handed poker sometimes there's never a pot until somebody bets ten-handed mirage back in the day amazing games the small blind is one dollar the big blind is two dollars there's only three dollars out there there is never a pot until someone puts more money in so whether there are ten people still in the hand or two people still in the hand it doesn't matter. Like, I've seen all-ins, blind versus blind. I've seen flops that go seven ways, and there was no raise. All seven people just put in the big blind, the pot is $14, and all seven people check the flop, and all seven people check the turn, and all seven people check the river, and at the end of the hand, even though seven people were in it, all four streets, the pot only got up to $14. But, like I said, I've seen blind versus blind, $300 each go in the middle. There's never a pot until somebody bets. So that reasoning, when people try to explain it to someone who's new, and they say, yeah, you know, there, there's, there's nothing to play for. What's the point? There's nothing in there. That is literally every single hand that was ever dealt. Every single hand of poker that was ever dealt at one point had a very small amount of money in there. And then eventually someone bet. You need to give people the opportunity to bet, to raise, to re-raise, to call a raise. So even if there's only two people left in the hand, that can happen. There could be an all-in. I've seen it. I've been involved myself in blind versus blind all-ins. So I don't like the reasoning. If uh, people just said, yeah, the pot's probably not going anywhere and we could just move on to the next hand and save a little time. Yeah, that's usually the case. Usually blind versus blind hands are very small. And yeah, by chopping, time is saved. Okay, I agree with that, but that's usually not the reason that people say. So there are my four reasons. Uh, I explained chops, and I said what the etiquette, the accepted etiquette is, and four reasons why I don't agree with the etiquette, even though in, uh, in, in, most, in most scenarios, like politeness and such. Um, I'm an etiquette fan. Not, not, not when it comes to uh, chopping the blinds in No Limit Hold'em Poker. And remember, 
Rice is a spoon food.